it's definitely broken. So, the motor runs perfect. The gearbox is definitely, definitely seized. So I think what we need to do is pull this windlass off and fit a new one. So for a while, I've been like hauling 30 meters of chain up by hand when we're out at sea. And it's not the easiest to do either. So I think it's time for a new windlass. So I think we should take the anchor off. First, get rid of the chain. Right, that's away. Bit rusty, isn't it? She's off. Wasn't as bad as I thought actually. I was going to be working upside down for a long time, but this here is the offending item. I'm going to go and tell Gemma the good news. Alright, Gem. Got your presents. I thought this was my last present. Can you make that work? That was my last present. Oh, she got she got a sucking machine. <laughs> right. Okay. I've got the answer to your problems and the answer to our problems is a brand new windlass from ultramarine come and have a look so we have the coastal 700 windlass so let's have a look what's in the box Shiny. So there you go, there's one part. Where's your motor? This one has even got one of them. What's it called, Joe? Uh, it's a relay. Well done. <laughs> there you go. And we can go forwards and reverse, methinks, on this one, which is going to be handy. So we've got our instructions. Spin them. Our handle and our gasket. So it looks simple enough to fit, but does it fit in the hole that we've got at the front of the boat? That's a beauty, that. It doesn't fit. So I knew it wouldn't fit exactly to the holes that it needed to be. Stub pattern on the bolts is fine, but where the chain goes through the boat into the anchor locker, the hole's different. But we could have just bought a replacement motor for the one that we already had. But that replacement motor was actually double the cost of a brand new windlass. 
and also our other windlass was 35 years old so i thought for the sake of having to sort out a few little holes it was better to get a brand new windlass so how about then we take the plate off we take it back to the workshop and we had the hole and make a new one back to the workshop right then back at the workshop should we see if we can make this these holes a slightly different shape so we're going to clean it all up first then we're going to probably drill the holes because these are slightly different as well and we'll get it lined up and then what we need to do is alter the position of the i don't know what it's called where the chain goes it's not the horse pipe is it but chain pipe maybe or where the chain goes through right let's get to it so i'm not sure if you can see too well but the stud pattern is ever so slightly out so i've put the gasket over the top but the stud so if we just sort of draw around that now then we'll use a little die grinder here to try and open them out So she fits. She's a beauty. Right, so you can see now that this um, this hole's in the wrong place, so we need to be able to move this hole underneath here. So we align the gasket. So the new hole has to be here, but it'd be nice if I use this material to fix this hole, because then we know it's like the same material. So maybe we can make this hole a bit bigger. I don't know, because then that's going to go around there, isn't it? Perfect. So because we want to fill in this area here, according to the little map here, so if we turn that around there, and then because we need to cut another hole here, so if we go slightly bigger on this hole, which I don't think will make any odds. So if we could cut this one out here now, then that will technically go in and then fill this space. So I'm now wondering whether I plasma cut it out or use a hole saw. The hole saw selection is not the best. But I suppose if the hole saw won't do it, then definitely the plasma will. I might be able to mark it and get a good guideline. Right, we'll try and hole saw it first. But what we don't want to do is put the hole in the middle because that'll be outside our perimeter of the windlass. So, right, I'll set the pillar drill up with this in it and we'll try and clamp it all up nice and tight and see if we can cut a nice hole right so i've got to set up in the pillar drill now it's all perfectly lined up lots of clamps in it so we can't move uh, i always like to lock off the the um the hole cutter rather than using the little pins so you don't get the chatter then and it cuts a lot better so i'm not sure if it's going to work but this would be a nice clean round hole rather than me doing a um a wibbledy wobbly line with the plasma cutter so let's just give it a shot so the issue we're going to come across with this pillar drill it won't go very slow there is a reason for it i could fix it but i've never bothered and uh, so we're going to be cutting a bit too fast i think so i think we'll give it we'll give it plenty of plenty of squirt that 
We're lined up. It's the whole drill's moving. Right, we just overheated the drill. Right, I think we failed at that. Not gonna work, is it? Stainless, bad cutter, too fast, should have known better. Right, let's get the plasma cut around now. We're now we've now got a nice line to cut at least, haven't we? So, right, so I've got the plasma cut around the seventy-one machine. I think it's one of my favourite tools. I think there's a link as well on our website or something. You get a discount on these. Right, let's cut this. So the whole saw has left us with a nice cut line at least. So let's try and cut that. I'm gonna start off low on the power setting. Might give me a bit more time, I don't know. I'll say I'm not very good at this sort of thing, but we, we, all, we all try, don't we? All right, let's do it. The old Suzuki safety glasses working well. I uh, probably won't pick that up for a minute. It's a bit hot. Nice clean cut. Uh, let's see if we're anywhere close. Still got to grind this out, yeah, but. That way, wouldn't it? All right, chill out. Come on, let's even line this hole up here. Look at that, it's perfect. Right, so what we need to do now is get all this cleaned up. We need to weld this up and then try and learn how to blend it all in so nobody ever knows. I've never done that before. I was in like trying to smoothen it off, but let's give it a go. Right, so I've reset me welder now into TIG mode. Um, so yeah, I've not done stainless for a long, long time, but I was quite good at it many, many moons ago. Right, let's um, put a, f a few very small tacks on it just to make sure it stays perfectly flat with the top. So when we polish it or whatever we do, um, it'll look right. Let's do it. So I've got it all clamped up, it's perfect, so I'm just gonna, it's perfect here. So I'm just gonna put a tack there, then we might start moving the clamp round. There it goes. Not too bad. A bit hot though. But it's a bit less stressful, I think, than doing Ali. I find out Ali's a bit like, it's all going on. This is just sort of very gentle. Ah, the alignment's really good. So I'll put, I'm going to put a few more tacks on it, then we can get the, um, the clamp away. Not bad. Right, so I'm going to clamp a piece of alley on the underside because we've got to fill in a few holes as well. So it's a trick I've used on steel and thin steel with some copper in the past and just by mig there and it doesn't stick to the copper. But I haven't got a chunk of copper, so I've got a chunk of alley. And as well, that'll hopefully try and keep it straight. I'm not too sure what it'll do to the penetration because of the... I might have to turn the amps up, I don't know. 
but we'll give it a try. There, so that's all welded up now. It's actually very, very flat, I think, due to my aluminum block technique. But Gemma's just come in and said, what did he say? Well, actually, Gemma's very poorly. What, what did you just say? I grind and mix the welder you ain't. <laughs> yeah, so I'll translate just in case, because her, vo her voice is like... Um... <laughs> not well. <laughs> it's not well. She said, a grind and mix the welder you ain't. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know some people say sometimes you should have got Gemma to weld that. <laughs> but Gemma's poorly today, so I couldn't. Next time. Next time. Right, so I'm going to go watch a YouTube video now on how to make this like disappear and polish it, but I don't think I'll have the kit, so we'll have to see what we can do. Right, so we just watched some videos on the old YouTube. That was intelligent as us, really. Right, what, we need, what they started with was basically a flappy wheel, so I'm going to use a worn out flappy wheel, just try and get it flat. And then we need to have a dig around the workshop, see if we can find something. We have got like a, I don't know what you call it, like a buffing wheel thing, so we might try that. Anyway, right, let's start with the grinder. The Gemma thinks teapot first. I'm not disagreeing. I've got Brasso. Right, we're changing brands. Brasso now. It smells like the same. It looks the same. Hold on a second. Is teapot the same as Brasso? We've been out over now for years. Oh. It's not the same company, is it? So before you actually cleaned it all up, did you check the windlass fits? No, we kind of missed that step, didn't we? So I'm pretty it, sure we will. <laughs> but if it doesn't, you're going to have to cut more holes in it and you have to polish it again. So, should we see if it fits? Oh yeah, look. There's no big hole anymore. Look how shiny it is. You can just see the camera. I think that's good enough to get back to the boat now. I think it's okay. Right, let's go back to the boat. Right, so back at the boat then. So, should we see if the plate fits? Well, it still fits, obviously, because we haven't changed the um, the outside, have we? But there's a slight problem now. Is that the hole is in the wrong place? Because we moved it from there to there, didn't we? Right, so we need to draw this out. And then I think there's actually a slight curve in it where we've um, where we welded it, so might try and give that a bit of a straighten. A hole sensor. Right, so that lines up perfectly now. So let's do a quick test fit before we get some glue out. 
Oh yes. So when I push down on this, you can see like there's a slight raise along here. So it'd be nice to be able to give that a bit of a, a curl down. And then when it's bolted up, then it should pull it all nice and tight, shouldn't it? We don't really want any snaggy bits. Right, well, let's try and bend that. And then it's pretty close to being fitted then. Right, we'll come up to the yard in the gangway. Um, don't really want to start pounding on this, on the slipway. People might still be asleep. And as well, it's not very good to hit against, is it anyway? So I found a piece of wood. Um, give us something to like, give it a good whack against and try and straighten this out because there is just a slight curve in there. I'm not too sure whether you'd be able to see on camera. I'll try and I'll try and show you now. Right, that should do it. Let's go try it on the boat. Right, that fits really good now. Right, what we're going to do is get the glue out, put some round it, stick it all down, put the windlass on, put the nuts on it, and then we're done. That's not the easiest place to work. <laughs> but yeah, look. All solid now. Fits quite nice. Very good. Right, we're going to connect up the wires. In the kit, it comes with a relay, a forward and reverse relay, but for now, I'm going to use our original relay because I want to put a nice switch on the dashboard for forward and reverse, so that's another job. But we're just going to do this today. Right, what's next, Jem? Cup of tea. Cup of tea time. Right, let's go see if it works. What are you doing? Cleaning it. <laughs> Got the onion all out. Give it a good clean. That's proper, isn't it? That's proper shiny. Bit of bling, that. Right, hang on, let's see if it works. Right, so we've got a little foot switch. The sun's blinding me. It's, it's a lot quieter than the old one, even though the old one was broken, but before the old one broke, I think it's faster as well. That spins quite fast. So Ultramarine helped us out so much with this new windlass. So if you're looking for one, you can email them and give them all the specs of your boat and they'll be able to tell you what the right windlass is to fit to your boat. So it made the whole process so easy to know which one we needed so i'll drop a email address in the description to so message bjorn tell him that you've seen it on our video and he'll be able to help you out so thank you so much to ultramarine for sorting us out and um, come back next time because i've got one more trick up my sleeve see thanks for watching see you all soon